I'm Kimberly G, and we have a question here at Wiseant on how do we actually find the center of an earthquake. Um, we know we we know that the epicenter is on top at ground level, and the focus is directly beneath. But how do we figure out exactly where it is? Well, it comes down to triangulation, just like when you're playing your video games and you have to figure out exactly where to drop the bomb onto a nest of aliens that you want to kill, right? So that you have to have triangulation, which means three. You find an earthquake center exactly the same way. We have three earthquake centers required. I've got some pictures here to help you show what I'm talking about. You know when you have a, some guys running on a track and one guy runs faster than the other. For every second that they're running, the faster guy gets further and further and further ahead of the other guy. Well, do you remember there's three types of earthquake waves? The first type of earthquake wave is called primary waves, then secondary waves, then surface waves. And the reason primary waves are called primary is because they're faster. Works just like the guys on the track. So when the primary waves come through, we know exactly how much faster they are than the secondary waves. So we can do math on it. So the way that it works, we have our three earthquake stations. Right here in this big picture, I have one shown in red, in yellow, and in blue. And where the three circles meet, again, triangulation, that's where the earthquake center is. Let's look at the second picture. All right, looking at the red one first. With their, the earthquake centers are always, always, always ready and waiting for an earthquake to happen. And when an earthquake happens, the waves travel out in all directions at once. So when an earthquake wave hits that first red station right here, um, he immediately sets a timer. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, waiting for the second wave to hit through. And as soon as that second wave hits through, boom, he stops his clock. And he knows from the math that he is 1,800 kilometers away from where it originated. And so he start, from his little earthquake station, he draws himself a circle. 1,800 kilometers, because he knows he's 1,800 kilometers away, but he has no idea from which direction the earthquake came. In comes the second guy here in the blue circle. So the same earthquake wave, primary wave, comes through his station, and he sets his timer. Boom. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. And when the second wave comes through, he stops his clock, and he knows he's 2,800 kilometers away. So he draws his circle. And at that point, where the red circle and the blue circle cross, they know it's one of those two locations. That's why we need the third guy, and that's why they call it triangulation. Third guy is sitting there at his earthquake station, waiting, just like the other two guys. When the primary wave comes through, boom, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four, and he's waiting, and he's waiting, and he's waiting, because the second wave takes a lot longer the further away you are. When the second wave finally comes through, boom, he stops his clock, and he knows he's 4,800 kilometers away. So when he draws his circle right there, where the three circles interact, where the th they connect, that is the epicenter at top, and then the focus is directly beneath that. So that is how you find the earthquake, the center of an earthquake, using triangulation. And I'm Kimberly G, and I hope this helped you a lot. Thanks.